Okay, so good morning. Um, this this little this is my little uh, transition routine. Um, it's it's very it's very necessary to get students' attention between different types of activities. So sometimes uh, the focus will be on me. Sometimes the focus will be on you. Um, and when I want to get your attention again, what I'm going to do is... And the good thing about this is it means it's a, it's a call and response routine, right? So it means that you have to put down your phones or your pens or whatever in order to be able to respond. So that means I, I kind of get your full attention. No? So it's a little technique that I use in... I'm Matthew Johnson. Um, I teach in Magisterio, in Centro Universitario Carnaz Cisneros, in Alcalá de Henares. And this is a, a, a teacher training college. I also have um, psychology degrees and degrees in social education as well. And it's affiliated to the University of Alcalá. And I coordinate the bilingual project there. So um, I'm involved in the training of future bilingual teachers. We have a, a, a bilingual itinerary. And those students have about 50% of their credits um, taught through English using the CLIL methodological approach. And the, the philosophy that we have really is that we don't tell them how to teach using CLIL. We, the group of teachers in the bilingual project, we actually use the CLIL approach with them so they get to experience it themselves. Uh, and we get them to reflect on the things that we're doing and the, the, you know, the, the approach that we're using and the different techniques and so on. So that's the way I work and that's the way I'm going to work today. When I say that's the way I'm going to work today, that's not exactly true. It's the 12th of July. Friday is my last day working. I'm kind of in relax mode. So today you are going to work a lot and I'm not going to work very much, really. Uh, my work happened before when I prepared the presentation and I prepared the session. So today, you'll be doing the work and I'll be taking it easy, okay? So, um, the, the flip classroom the, or flip learning is something which is kind of fashionable at the moment. It's, uh, it's, it's on everybody's lips, right? Um, but I'm interested not just in how we do these things, but why. No, I, 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 the kind of thing that my students hate when in exams, you know, when you say, justifica tu respuesta, no? Well, this is, today I'm going to justify my answer. I'm going to kind of argue why I think this is a good thing and why it's appropriate for CLIL. Um, so it's not just how, but also why. So these are the three things we're going to do. We're going to look at um, some opportunities and also the challenges, because uh, I, I have done a very similar session to this one before, and we had no internet. It didn't really work quite so well. So I know there are challenges, but we got through it, and it was fine in the end. Um, we're going to look at some activities, and you're going to do a few activities and use a few of the tools. Um, and we'll look at some of those tools, but I'm not a fan of those presentations on technology where the presenter gives you a list of, here's a tool you can use, and here's another tool you can use, and here's another tool. And have you seen this for making cartoons? And have you there are many tools which can achieve the same objective. So what we need to look at really is the objective, I can show you an example of a tool, but more exist which you might actually prefer, okay? So, um, let's, let's get started, and I'm going to put the focus on you. And I want to reflect, first of all. I want to think about this. So, um, this, is, this is my question. Think about your time in class as a teacher and how your time is divided proportionately. Like, how much time do you spend doing different things in class? And what I'd like you to do on a piece of paper, I'm going to give you a moment of quiet, individual time, about a minute, to think about this. And I want you to draw a pie chart like this, and I want you to divide it between the different activities that you, as a teacher, carry out in class. Now, this is mine. And... It looks great on here, but it doesn't look so, so good on there. So monitoring, that's one of the things I do a lot of. I spend 50% of my time walking around the class and watching what the students are doing, more or less, I think. Um, guiding them, helping them, they, 
Sometimes I monitor and I say nothing. Sometimes I monitor and they ask me questions. Sometimes I monitor and I notice things and I want to intervene. So that's kind of 29% of my time. Um, the, the smallest proportion here is time spent explaining. I don't really spend very much time um, doing this at all. No? Uh, and the other one is, uh, is extending and giving feedback and feeding back to the group and so on. So what I'd like you to do, and you've got a minute, first of all, is to draw your pie chart, think of the things you do in class, and kind of make it proportionate. Okay, so ready, steady, go. Your categories don't have to be the same as mine. You teach in primary, I'm sure. I teach at university. I'm sure we do very different things on some occasions. Thank you, that's working very well. Now, um, what I'd like you to do is to share your pie chart with somebody or some people sitting close to you. Uh, and I'd also like you to reflect a little bit, are there any surprises here now that you stopped and thought about this? Are there any things you spend too much time doing or any things that maybe you think you don't spend enough time doing? So what I'd like you to do really is to share your pie chart and what you do and what you wrote and why with your partners. So I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that. Go.
Thank you. So, oh, very quiet. Um, what about some of the categories or some of the activities or some of the things that you do in class? Because mine were monitoring and guiding, explaining, and so on, and, and you probably wrote some different things. So what other things did you, did you write? I saw some interesting ones. I saw somebody who wrote control. Yeah? Controlling the crowd, I guess, no? That's, that's of course, this, this happens, yeah, yeah. And I saw somebody wrote... Um, Something like I inventing new activities, which was a surprise for me. Like in, in the class, inventing new activities. But um, uh, we inventing because we have uh, autism children. And to attract attention, we use uh, ICT tools, um, design flashcards, and, or a list of words, and chairs with the uh, schools around us. Sounds great, right? Uh, of course. I mean, sometimes we spend some time improvising. It's true. Improvising sounds like a bad thing, no? But it's, it really, it's adaptive teaching, no? It's adapting to the necessities on the spot, no? That's, that must be, a, must be a good thing. doesn't mean you didn't prepare. It means that things happen and, you know, you need to adapt. What, what other things do you do apart from controlling and adapting and so on? Ah, evaluating. Hmm. What does, it, what does evaluating mean? Define that, please. So it's not just giving tests. Ah, okay, good. It's a relief. Good. Okay, observing, of course, yeah, which is a part of evaluation. Anything else? Okay. Expand, please. So not necessarily problems with their learning, but with their cohabiting, no? With their, yeah, okay. Anything else? And how do you do that? Sure, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, social work going on here as well as teaching, no? Okay. Did anybody, put up your hand if you wrote down explaining. Yeah, okay. Good. Put up your hand if you wrote more than 50% of the time explaining. More than 40%? 40. More than 30? More than 20? Okay, I mean, I guess we spend more, at least 20% of time explaining, right? Okay. And, and did anyone write down giving input? That's a nice way of saying explaining, isn't it? Or not? No, not. Good. Justify your answer. I think explaining is more relating, more uh, like uh, explaining grammar. But giving input, although you can use it to explaining grammar as well, maybe it's more because I used to give uh, uh, to teach uh, younger students from six to eight years old, so they need more input, more oral skills, more listening. So I, I, I say give input because they need the first input to get the output, and they need more passive, more passive input in order to in the future, in the future, maybe when they, they are in fifth year, sixth year, uh, produce more. So they need more input. This is like exposure, no? Giving them exposure to the, to the language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, good. Well, um, what I'm interested in doing now is taking a risk, taking a chance, no? Uh, I really hope that some of you or most of you have QR code readers. However, I'm going to ask you to work in groups. I don't need everybody to, to have one. So if you can work in a group of the people that are in the same line as you, 
Uh, and if one person in that group has a tablet or a phone with a QR code reader, that would be great. And what I'd like to do now is to, um, I mean, let's, let's go here and we'll see what it, we'll see what it looks like. Are you, have any of you used Padlet? Have you used it? Let's have a look. Fingers crossed. Don't worry, I'll, I'll go back to the QR code in a moment. I just want you to see what, what you'll see first. So, give me a... Uh, one second. Okay, so I'll, I'll bring the QR card back in a moment. This is, I'll bring it back. This is what you're going to see. Um, Padlet is a great sharing tool, okay? And as you can see, I put a little post on here. The question was, what do you like doing in class? And if you, on your phone or on your tablet, if you click on here, or if you click on the add button, then you will get a little box in which you can write your responses as well, okay? So what I'd like you to do is uh, just one person in each group to talk together and to respond to the question. And let's go back to this. Why do you like teaching and what do you enjoy doing in class? Because I'm sure some of the things like the, the disciplining and maybe even the explaining of grammar are not necessarily the things which you most enjoy doing, right? Yeah, that's fine. We can have a queue at the front of people trying to focus from closer. That's fine. Even if the Wi-Fi is a bit problematic, even with your datos, you're not going to use very much. So if the Wi-Fi is not going very well, then you'll be fine to use datos to write one little message. While some of you are in, I can see some activity.
So just to make my instructions clear, if you're in, you have to answer the question, why do you like teaching and what things do you like doing in class? Okay, so, of course we could go on and spend more time doing this, but we have a, a selection of a few comments here. And you see, obviously this works better on a tablet or a computer than it does on a mobile phone, because you have a much bigger screen uh, to play with. 
But the idea of this is it's a, it's a collaborative tool that you can use in real time or not. So it's the kind of thing that you could use in the classroom, but also the kind of thing that works very well outside the classroom if they have access to the technology so that they can cooperate, collaborate, and, and communicate, really, no? because it's a, different, uh, it's a different medium. So um, it's good that you, I mean, that I noticed some things on here is uh, that uh, having fun, I think that's a, that's a great one. You, know, you love having fun in class. Do you have fun in class when you're explaining grammar? And maybe you do. It's not impossible. I love grammar. Um, but quite often when it's teacher-centered and the teacher is like the fountain of knowledge and it's the teacher giving the input, neither the teacher nor the students are having that much fun. Right? Um, and there's one key idea here. And it's kind of what I'm doing at the moment. And this idea is lockstep. Have you heard of this expression before, lockstep? What does it mean? Tell us. Kind of. It's like, exactly, it's, it's, it's what soldiers do when they march. No? That when soldiers march, it's the wrong pace for most of them. Because some of them are shorter and some of them are taller and their leg lengths are different, but they have to go at the same pace. And the same thing in the classroom. When all the students are doing the same thing at the same time, quite often that's in a situation where it's the teacher explaining. And for some of the students, the teacher's explanation is too quick and they get lost. And for some of the students, the, the teacher's explanation is too slow and they get bored. But we insist on doing this, no? having them all doing the same thing, following our explanation at the same time. And one of the ideas about the flipped classroom is that element of teaching, which is the teacher's transmission of verbal explanations, can be done in other ways. And we can spend more time in the classroom doing things that maybe we enjoy more and that perhaps they enjoy more and that is at the right uh, the right pace for them as well. So let me just go back to the let me just go back to the presentation. We could go back to the Padlet and do it again, but it's being a little bit time consuming. The idea of this is what do they enjoy or not enjoy? doing in class. And I think the, the, the question really is, if we think about it, how would those two lists compare? So if you asked your students what they like doing in class, what do you think they would say? I'll give you 30 seconds to talk to someone near to you. What would your students say if you asked them that question? I said 30 seconds, I wasn't lying. So, what would they say that they enjoy doing in class? Games. Dancing, computers, singing. Working in groups. Ah. PE, okay. Quizzes and things. I guess everybody's using Kahoot, right? Yeah, since Kahoot was discovered, I've never, I've not met a teacher in the last five years who's not using, or last two years maybe, who's not using Kahoot. They love this kind of thing, right? Um, do the lists coincide? I mean, do they like doing the same things you like doing? Yeah, more or less, no? 
Do you like singing and dancing? Yeah. Is this a group of are these infants teachers here anywhere? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a very different. Yeah, it's a different mindset, definitely. Okay. Uh, I was uh, some of the messages I saw up here. I thought, hmm, sounds like infant teachers. Yeah, very good. Um, so the thing is, um, I think we often insist on doing things in class which we don't like doing, they don't like doing, but we continue doing them, which begs the question, why? And what can we do about it? Um, and the thing is, is I, I think these often the songs and the games and the, the these are often the rewards for them behaving well during the boring stuff. Okay. It's quite often the case. I th I'm, it's a big generalization. I'm sure that's not always true. But in many situations, I think that can, be, uh, that can be a reality, right? So if we can make all the fun stuff like really worthwhile, useful, the focus, the main focus of the class, and kind of do the boring stuff outside the class, then that sounds like a win-win situation to me. Now, I have a little question. Every now and then, I'm going to stop and... Uh, I'm going to stop and ask you this question. And the question is, how was it for you? Okay. So from this session so far, the things we've talked, the things you've done, which was compared your ideas with your partners, draw the graph, use Padlet. How was the experience? And be critical. Think about it on practical and pedagogical levels. Okay. Talk to your partners. Thirty seconds, and then you can tell me how's, been, how's the experience of the session been so far. And don't just tell me nice things to make me feel happy. I'm very receptive to criti constructive criticism, so don't worry. So, what do you think? Okay, any thoughts to share? You're dying to say something, I can tell. No? Oh, okay. Anything to share? I knew it. Thanks. Yeah, that's about, yeah. But, that is a good, but that's a very good point. You, you don't want to teach in the way that you were taught. From my experience in Magisterio, it doesn't matter how much stuff we teach them. When they get into their practicum, sometimes they revert to teaching the way they were taught. It's the biggest influence on them, and we have to fight against this. I think you're right. Anyone, anything else to share? All the other speakers, Elena and everybody else has been telling me that what a great participative group you are, all eager to see. And I come along and I kill it. Okay. So, a couple of ideas. I'm not going to read it. You read it. This is the key question. When deciding what we do in class, for me, and of course, nobody, nobody, nadie cumple con esto siempre. It's true, like we don't. But keeping it in mind, we, I think we should only be doing things in class that we 
that the students can't do without us. No? And I quite often find that like, they do stuff in class, then they go home, and it's the parents who help them to do certain things that they, didn't, that they weren't really clear about in the, in the classroom, right? I remember I used to spend, when I, when I taught English as a foreign language years ago, uh, I used to spend a lot of time doing listenings in class. And it suddenly, ca and, and it suddenly came to me that, that this was a waste of time, no? because they could do listenings that they didn't need me to press play on the CD recorder. No? So I reduced, I didn't eliminate, but I reduced the amount of time spent on listening, and I worked on listening in a different way, because I realized lots of the things they could do um, at home. Do you know the think pair share technique? Has anyone used this with you so far? Oh, it's great. It's a scaffolding technique to promote oral output and also cognitive um, processes as well. If I ask you this question now, so here's, let, let's do a little demonstration. So, what can the teacher or students do in class that they can't do at home? Stay with the friends. See, I, I'm disappointed now because she was prepared with the answer. I was expecting shock and silence, no? Because I gave her no time to think and no time to prepare. So think, pair, share is a very nice strategy for getting students to think not only about the, the question and the idea, but also how they're going to express themselves. So this is what we're going to do. That's the question, and I am going to insist on 30 seconds of silence which is thinking individually. Can we achieve this? Can we do 30 seconds? Yeah, I'm sure we can. Then the second step is share. And in this case, what you do is you talk to the person sitting next to you and you compare your ideas. Sorry, this is pair. And share is the third step where, if you wish, you can share it with the whole group. Now, why does this work? First, you have time to think. Second, you have time maybe to generate more ideas with your partner to confirm that your ideas are quite good because if they think the same as you, then hmm. And if they think something different, then hmm, maybe you learn. And then because you're talking about it, you're also practicing for the moment when you might have to speak in front of the whole class. So that's the idea with this. It's a very easy stage. Huh? Teachers often ask questions. Ask a student. Wait for two seconds. When they get no response, they ask a different student, and that this is not going to help students to respond to questions, right? So, can we do 30 seconds? What can the students and the teacher do in class that they can't do at home? 30 seconds, starting now. See, impossible. You did, you did four seconds of silence. Never mind. 